would you look at this living room? Friends, <laughs> it's been a little while. Welcome to this week's video. I am so excited to finally be sharing that we are doing a living room refresh makeover. If you guys have been with me for a while, then you've seen this room kind of, it's been through a lot of different phases. We've tried different furniture configurations. We've gone through a few different rugs and there's just really random kind of furniture accent pieces in here that never really were intended to be permanent, but over the past year, they've just kind of been left there. We will also be doing two huge DIY projects and really personalizing this living room. So I hope it brings you a ton of inspiration to maybe put some sweat equity into your own homes and make a space you can really be proud of. This was actually a few weeks ago. I just thought it was important to kind of share the process that we've gone through in here. This rug was actually intended for our bedroom, but I still hadn't found the perfect one for the living room. So this just acted as a temporary fix. It's a printed rug by Laloy and I found it on Amazon. We have a few Laloy rugs. I do highly recommend them, especially the printed ones because they're super easy to clean. I will link this down below. But after we get this rug laid out, John and I are going to be starting on our huge accent wall project and you guys don't want to miss it. We're starting our slat wall project and right now we're just kind of brainstorming as far as how we want to best cut these planks so we're not wasting a bunch of wood. I want each slat to be, can I see a ruler? I'm terrible with, to be this big, to be, I'd say an inch and a half. And how big are these? An inch and a half? Yeah, babe. Okay. It's not that big when it's on a large wall, honey. Okay. It's really not. Okay. So. These planks are seven. Seven and one inch. I think one is nice. We're doing one inch slats. It's going to take four years. Is this going to be four? I knew I wanted to really make an impact in our living room and do a really fun feature wall. Having a ranch style home that's like in the latter end of mid-century, I really thought this house needed a slat wall. So John and I just went to Home Depot and we chose select pine um, planks. These were not that very cheap. I think they were about $24 per plank. And we went through quite a few of them. I will be honest, I believe the feature wall that we did in our house cost us about, I would say $550. Uh, we did choose a nicer wood, so we didn't have to do a ton of sanding or staining or treating of it, but there are definitely more budget-friendly options out there and Pinterest is a great resource. But this worked so well, it was worth the cost because it is a main feature in our living room and you can't unsee it. So I'm glad we spent a little bit more money because it's like a piece of art. We set up our table saw and set the guard up for one inch slats and we just got to cutting. I would highly recommend uh, two people for a job like this. These planks are very, very long and it was very time consuming, but luckily for you guys, there's YouTube magic and I sped it up and I didn't put even half of the footage in here.
So once we had all of our slats cut out, each plank left us with about, I would say maybe just over a quarter of an inch piece of wood. So that's the piece of wood that we used in between all of our slats so that we had even and straight lines. So you guys will kind of be able to see, I left quite a bit of the footage in here and slowed down some of it. We basically took a brad nailer and put a nail at the bottom, the midpoint and the top of the slat, pulled out that little spacer and then lined it back up over and over and over and over again this ensures that all of your spaces are exactly even and that your um your lines are nice and straight because when you're doing a slat wall if you don't do this step which is super imperative you'll stand back and you'll notice everything just gets skewed you really need to make sure that you have straight lines After living with this TV mounted for the past year, I've just thought it was way too high. First of all, I, in my opinion, this thing is way too big, but John likes this TV. But either way, I had him move it down about six, uh, maybe six inches or so, and it's just such a, a more appropriate and visually appealing height. So he did move it. Apparently I didn't get footage, and we continued on the wall, which you guys will see finished at the end of the video. John and I are about to get started on the rehab of our media console, but before I do that, I would really love to thank Acorn TV for sponsoring today's video. Acorn TV is the largest commercial-free British streaming service that offers compelling stories, exclusive premieres, and originals that you won't find anywhere else. There's always something new to discover on Acorn TV. I don't have a ton of time to watch TV these days, but when I do, I want it to, number one, be something I've never seen before, two, be really funny, or three, be a murder mystery, and Acorn TV is full of amazing murder mysteries. But right now, I'm really into Finding Alice. I'm on episode five, but there are only six, and I'm so sad. The story follows Alice, who loses her partner Harry after he falls down the stairs and dies in the brand new smart house he had just built for them. As the storyline goes on, there are all kinds of secrets and mysteries that start popping up, and it's really Alice just navigating her life and how to keep their home after Harry passes. Acorn TV is completely commercial free and it's available for just $5.99 a month. You'll never run out of content because Acorn TV adds new releases every Monday. You can choose from thousands of hours of exclusive originals and deep cuts you won't find anywhere else. Acorn TV works on all of your favorite devices. I usually watch mine when I'm editing in my office, so I just watch it from the app on my phone, but you can also use an Amazon Fire TV, Google Chromecast, Roku, and more. 
With Acorn TV, there's always something new to discover. Try Acorn TV free for 30 days by going to acorn.tv and use code DeniseB. The promo code is case sensitive, so make sure Denise B is all in lowercase. I walk across the room just to show you that I'm still around. Ask if you wanna meet somewhere later when the sun goes down. If you've been around for a while, then you remember the first time John and I rehabbed this buffet. It took hours and hours and hours of sanding. This whole thing was originally like a dark, almost cherry brown kind of color. It was very ugly. And we redid it and took it down to the original wood and then just waxed it. And while it was a very, very pretty piece, it wasn't right for our space. So I found an image of a media console that I really, really had my heart set on, but it was $1,500 and just $1,500 I did not want to spend. So one day I was walking past this thing and I just thought I could totally make that and we could do it easily. So I'm including a little picture to show you guys what my inspiration media console was. Of course, the shape wasn't exact, but at the end of the day, we're really proud of what we did and I can't wait to show you guys. I didn't want this media console to be like some shiny black eyesore in my living room. I wanted it to be matte and flat and just kind of have a presence but not be super loud. So I chose Blackout by Bayer and I got it in their marquee line. So technically I probably only needed one coat but I did do two for good measure. And I also got a matte poly to put over it just to protect it and make it easier to clean. While I was painting, John was busy getting the new doors cut out. We just had some leftover plywood some, from some other projects we had done in the house. He basically just made a template from the old doors, cut them to the exact same size, and the same thing with the little drawer front here as well. 
We also decided to make a shelf, but only a handful of inches high. I purely just wanted it for aesthetic reasons, to put a couple books there, not fill it up with a bunch of knickknacks. So we did that as well, and then got to cutting out the detail work and the doors. Because I wanted this inlay cut out to have rounded corners, I decided to take this butcher paper from the girls' craft room, folded it into quarters, and then kind of curved the edges around. This ensured that every single one of my edges was the exact same shape and it wouldn't look all wonky when we went to cut it out with the jigsaw. Once we finished all of our cuts, it was time to get the hand sander out and really work on that plywood because it was pretty rough and I wanted to make sure all of our edges were super smooth and prepped for paint. Once the paint was dry, it was time to put down our cane. I found this beautiful natural cane on Etsy. I will link it below. The shop owner was wonderful and the quality is fantastic. All I did was take a staple gun. I had John help me pull it taut and we just stapled away.
before I went around and put the screws in these furniture legs to secure them, I did make some pilot holes which made the whole process so much smoother. Don't talk about it like you're crazy You know damn well I can't replace you Just say what, say what you mean Don't waste your time being mad at me Say what this part was really easy for us because John just went ahead and we took all of the same um, hardware from the doors and the closures for the console from the original buffet and just repurposed them, put them in the same exact spots and everything just worked. It worked beautifully. <laughs> got you the way you look at me is absent it's like you're walking through a labyrinth just say what what's going on don't waste your time being all alone say what say what you mean say what you mean and you'll get get what you need get what you need what i do what i do is try to get Because this little area here did not have a shelf in it before, I went to Home Depot and I got these little brackets here. They're just two inch black brackets, which worked out perfectly. John did put small spacers between the wall and the bracket. That way it wouldn't put like, the screw wouldn't go through the other side and you wouldn't get scratched um, from the nail. And it worked out really well. What I do, what I do is try to get more than words. What I say, when I say I quit. Got you, I got you. I also decided I didn't want some weird blank space below that shelf that I just kind of had to fill with something like a blanket or a basket or who knows what else. So we decided to put up a faux panel in that space. So we secured it from the sides with some nails, basically just recreated the same exact thing we did for the doors. You guys will see it all at the end, but it's great. I don't have to worry about any other weird knickknacks or just filling the space with something that was just basically clutter. Um, yeah, and it looks really good. So you guys will see that at the end as well. Should it be like this? Locked up in your dome. You know I fight for you But do I Every time you call my name What do I, what do I You're whipping me into madness I try to lay low But I can never stay away from you 
this is the best part. We are putting the room together and I guess you didn't have to wait till the end. Here is the media console finished. So I'm super happy with it. I'll show you guys a closer look toward the end of the video. But now it's time to find the right rug for the space and start decorating. I found myself apologizing when you started it. Why under a spell? I really wonder how did it come to this? Go see my friends, but then I realize they're all your friends. <laughs> Our creative process kind of looks like this just about every time we do a project. John went up to Home Goods and he grabbed a couple, <laughs> I was so tired, he grabbed a couple of rugs that I had seen earlier in the day. We both agreed that they were lovely and would look nice in this space. This one here actually pulls pretty good pretty ugly on camera but it is beautiful in person it was a hand tufted wool rug by laloy it had lots of greens and grays a tiny bit of blue some goldish colors in it it looked very mid-century to me very traditional and it would have worked if it was larger and if that was the look we were going for but it was twice as expensive as this rug that we're unrolling now and this one is jute and wool so it's not the softest thing ever but it is really really fun we really like like the size of it and it just made the space feel more youthful more modern more fun and the other one to me looked more busy than this one even though it had a pattern but ultimately we decided on this one we love it we're super happy with it it's very unlike me to go with a green rug or just any rug that had you know it's just a solid color like this especially since i have so many green plants but somehow this works i am going to play with some more color in the living room this is just the first phase of our living room kind of redo um you guys are going to see i put a little something behind the couch but we are planning on commissioning a large painting to go above the back of the couch um, it's always a work in progress, but I feel like we have a really good starting point here. Now it's time to bring in some personal touches and warm up the space a little bit and wait to finish it off tomorrow.
So I just moved the bookshelf out of the way and swept up that way I knew the space was nice and prepped for the mirror that was being delivered. So this is my mirror. It's the Anthropology Gleaming Primrose Mirror and it's in the seven foot, it's the largest one they make. You guys know this wall is huge. I didn't really know what to do with it, but I love the idea of a massive mirror because it makes the room feel twice as big, which you guys will see. I'm gonna do lots of different shots of the living room. Um, I'm really happy with the purchase. It was definitely, definitely an investment piece. I've had my eye on it for a couple of years, but never really, I mean, just couldn't bite the bullet on it. But we moved into this house and John and I knew that we were gonna get some pieces for it that you know, we're probably gonna be a little bit more money, but would be in our home forever. It definitely does need to be mounted and secured to the wall. So as soon as John gets home today, I will be getting some hardware and doing that immediately. I love all of the different textures in this room. We've got, you know, natural wood elements and the cane and the natural fibers in the wool in the jute rug. The pillows are super soft and we've got the faux cowhide. I was just trying to evoke a feeling in here of comfort and, you know, an invitation to sit down. And I really feel like we achieved that in this space. I'm super happy with the start and I really look forward to watching this room evolve as time goes on. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it brought you a ton of motivation today. Enjoy your day. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in next week's video.